This is a Sutotal production. Hello surveyors, uh, this will be our last set of practice videos for chapter 9, our final chapter. So, um, with that I am the ever-present, in, at least in these videos, Sutotal. Now, um, so with chapter 9, there's a few different concepts that are harped on the most. So firstly, the one that you really want to get a firm grasp on is going to be naming. Um, and so we talk about how you can name alkanes, cycloalkanes, um, and alcohols, alkenes, and even esters. So I wanted to focus on, on those different typings real quick. So firstly, all of these, so per row, I tried to keep them kind of consistent with some of the main ideas in their naming. So for instance, uh, here we have this top row here, all of these are cyclic structures. All right, and so you've got to know, based off the number of carbons, right, when you're going to have uh, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec, when are you going to have those in the name, right, as a part of like the parent, right, and so as we look at each one of these, all of these are rings, so every single one of them is under the cyclo category, so what we're going to have to do is, let's take, let's look at this first one, we've got, oh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, this is a six-membered ring, so with six members, you tip, you use hex, so, and you notice all of these are single bonds, we don't see any double bonds or any oxygens or nitrogens or anything like that, so this is called cyclo hex ain, right? So that's what this guy's called. Here we have a, I believe it's seven membered, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, here we have a seven membered ring. So with seven carbons, you use hept. So this is cycloheptain, right? So cyclo because it's a ring, hept because it's seven, and then a-n-e, ain, because it's nothing but single bonds. All right, so here we have another ring, so cyclo. And then from there, we have one, two, three, four carbons. So that would be when there's a four carbon structure. We use but, so B U T. And there's nothing but single bonds, so we would use ane, A N E. So this is called cyclobutane. Here we have another ring, so cyclo it is, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So it is cyclo because it's a ring. It's eight carbons, which means we use oct, so cyclooct. And then um, it is nothing but single bonds, so we use ane, A-N-E. All right. Um, next, we have nothing but alkane chains. So yet these are going to end in the ane as well, because all I see are single bonds. So And there's no ring, so we don't use cyclo. So in this case, what do we have? We have a one, two, three carbon chain. So that would be what? Meth, eth, prop. So this is propane. Okay. Um, here we have one, two, three, four, five. So five is pent. So this would be pent ain. Here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's hept again. So this would be called heptane. Uh, here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine would be non, nine carbons. So this would be non ain. Okay. Um, Next up, let's see, all of these are similar in that they have this OH group, right? This is called an alcohol functional group, right? We'll talk more about that in another practice video, well, slightly anyway. So these are alcohols. So every single one of these don't end in ane like the first two sets did. They end in all, okay, O-L for alcohol. And so what you have to do is you have to first count how many carbons are, are in the parent, what we would call the parent. So here we've got one, two, three, four. So that's four carbons. With four carbons, we use but. All right, and it's, uh, and so it is a chain. So it's it's not butane, but it is butan all. So the E, right, that was in ane is dropped and we put all OL in its place. Now the other thing is, you have four different carbons. So you have to specify where that OH group is, which carbon it is. And so for this, what we see is you could either number this as one, two, three, four, right? Or you could number it as one, two, three, four. So the way IUPAC naming convention works is you want your, your group, 
in this case the alcohol, you want it to have the smallest number possible. So we would actually want a number based off of this top set of numbers. So I'm going to get rid of that, that 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bottom. So we would actually call this 1-butanol. All right. Next up we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is pent and all, right? So all because of the alcohol. And then if you notice the way we number, it's either one, two, three, or it's one, two, three. So it really doesn't matter. No matter which side of the chain we number, we get three at the alcohol position. So this would be called three pentanol. Uh, next up, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is hexanol. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And then hopefully you can kind of tell, right? We want to start numbering on this side. So we would get the alcohol at the second carbon position. So we would call this 2-hexanol, all right? Now a similar idea, here we have another functional group that's not an alcohol, but it is an alkene. So all of these end in E-N-E. -N -E. So we don't keep the A-N like we did in um, the alcohol case. So the A-N-E -E turns into E-N-E. -E. All right, so when we look at these, we, we're going to use the same idea of count the number of carbons. So it's one, two, three, four. So this is bute, right, for four. So it's butene. So it's a four carbon chain that has a, a double bond between carbons somewhere. Okay, now we do have to number its location. And so depend. it really doesn't matter for this one because this is buried directly in the middle of the chain. So if you notice, the double bond goes between carbons two and three. So what you do is you use the first carbon that sees the double bond. So this would be called two butene, right? Um, likewise here, what do we get? We get one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is hexene, right? And then when we go to number, of course we're gonna number on this end. So even, so the double bond does go through one and two, but we use the first carbon that, that has the double bond. So it's one hexene. Um, what do we get here? We get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is a heptene. All right, and so for there, I don't think the numbering that I use here is gonna work because the first double bond that gets it is a four. But if we number the other direction, one, two, three, four, the first carbon that sees it, oop, the first carbon that sees it is three. So this would actually be the, the end that we would want to start numbering our carbons, one, two, three. So this would be called three heptene. All right. Next, here we have a functional group called an ester. All right. Each of these esters, they end in O8. All right. That's what esters end in. All right, now here's the deal. These are kind of funky in that you have a, a substituent and then you have a parent. So the parent is always the one that has this double bonded oxygen. So this carbon that has a single and a double bonded oxygen, this is automatically understood to be carbon number one, period. All right, then from here, this is carbon two and this is carbon three. So that is a three carbon chain, which means we would use prop, right? But it ends in O8, right? So it's called propanoate, propanoate. That's what this part is called. So all of this is propanoate. Now we have to name this part, and this is a two carbon chain. So it two carbon chains are ethanes, but when it's a, a part of a parent, propanoate here, then we don't use ethane, we drop the A and E and we call it ethyl. So this is called ethyl propanoate, all right? So that part's the ethyl and then that part's the propanoate, okay? So using that same idea here, we have a carbon that has the double bonded oxygen and the single bonded oxygen. So this is understood to be carbon number one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So instead of calling this propanoate, it's now called pentanoate right so all of this right here is the pentanoate and then what do we have here we have a one two three carbon chain coming off of it so three carbons is propyl right propane so it'd be called propyl all right Okay, so hopefully this video kind of helps. Um, you know, we looked at cyclic structures, uh, cyclic alkanes, regular chain alkanes, alcohols, alkenes, and esters. So um, these are going to be kind of the dominant naming 
categories we're going to be looking at here. All right. So, as always, stay weird. Until next time, adios.